Hello, Doha. Welcome to 974 Live. My name is Abla Sibak and I'm here with... This is G. Valentino. Today's guest is a specialist in public relations and communication. She is the founder of Communication, a leading PR and communication agency here in Qatar. Amongst many other things, we are joined by Noura. Thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. It's our pleasure, hon. Okay, so look at this, Noura. We're going to play a small game. Okay. Each one of us is going to say five words, and against these five words, you're going to say the first thing that comes to your mind. Okay. All right? Do you start? I'm going to start? Okay. Yeah. The first word is Durham. Wait, what? <laughs> Noura knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> a beautiful city. Okay. Um, curiosity. The beginning of great things. Nice answer. PhD. Hopefully soon. In okay. the making. Future. The future is limitless. And Nora. Um, a person passionate about media. Nice. Abla? I'm gonna kill you, Jim. <laughs> Next time you tell me your I, word. I made her say this word, by the way, okay. but I think it's important. Okay. Communication with a Q. <laughs> An uh, industry benchmark. Inshallah. Favorite destination? Orange County. <gasps> oh, yes. My second home. Okay. Family. The most important thing. Inspiration. Inspiration. Um, it's, it's what moves you to become better. Okay. Media. Passion. Done? Yes. That's good. Yes. Perfect. Yes. I like, I like those answers. Right. I'm, I'm going to take it back to, I assume you grew up in Qatar. So, um, uh, my, in my childhood, so my dad uh, uh, used to work in the oil and gas industry okay. and my mom is a diplomat. Nice. So, uh, we traveled a lot. My childhood was spent in um, so many different countries. Paris was one of them. We lived in the States, we lived in several countries. And um, it's, it's really strange because I was just talking about this yesterday. As a kid, being eight or, or nine years old, um, you don't exactly love changing your school every year because yes. you're changing the country. Yes. However, when you grow up, you realize that um, this shapes your personality because yes. you get to meet so many different people. Different nationalities. Yes, and, and if you get to, you get to be, um, uh, involved in so many different cultures, cultures and yeah. yes yeah. so this really shapes you and it really makes you think of like the bigger picture the global picture so after I um, graduated I worked uh, in Al Jazeera again I was very I was very lucky and blessed to work in you know an internationally renowned um, media company yes. in Qatar so your passion was political science but when you got involved in media yeah. then you're like okay wait I think my passion is media. No, so it's not like that. So my passion was political science. My thesis, my um, when I graduated, my thesis was about Al Jazeera. So I did because because politics and media are so integrated, yes. and um, working in the media industry, there's a lot of politics. So I feel like I never left what I studied. Okay. Is there like a leadership style that you respond to positively? or a leadership style that has influenced you a lot? Uh, yes, sure. So, um, um, again, I was very lucky to work with so many amazing bosses and um, something that I realized um, later on in my career is that um, uh, for you to be a good manager or a good leader, um, you would have to 
work with people with different uh, personalities and then each person kind of has a has a key or or a preferred way to work with mm. so you wouldn't um, treat everyone the same or work with everyone the same each person has a different um, way that he um, to deal with yeah this. to deal with yes. so um, yeah and for for myself I feel like thinking back I was the kind of person that preferred to be given the brief and then given the responsibilities and then just let let's you know free to, to to come up with something nice. okay so I want to know I'm gonna go back to uh, when you were working at Jazeera what was your job title then or what was your responsibilities there as a fresh graduate okay so true story I joined Al Jazeera uh, right after I graduated and I joined Al Jazeera I think in December I graduated in June I joined okay. in December okay. um, I was the kind of person that would now thinking back um, they probably didn't didn't have much to give me but I was the kind of whatever you give me I'd finish it in half a day and come back asking for more and they would give me, you know, they would give me stuff to read, just, you know, like, <laughs> and I would read everything and summarize it and then come back, like, give me more, give me more. I remember um, I, used, I used to always come back to, uh, to my boss and ask for more projects. And then I stumbled upon um, a campaign um, that was kind of um, a campaign that started, but that was um, left aside with time. Mm -hmm. And it was um, a Samuel Hajj campaign. So Samuel Hajj, if 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 you're not uh, aware, he um, he's Al Jazeera reporter, okay. uh, who's now free, alhamdulillah. Uh, at that time, Al Jazeera, when I joined, uh, Samuel Hajj was in um, in jail for five years, mm. um, mm. without a trial, without a trial date. He was in Guantanamo Bay, which is now alhamdulillah it's closed. Mm. And so it's a it's a very it's a very sad story. Mm. It's a very real story, but at that time it was also an old story. I was, I was obsessed about this campaign. And at that time, social media was just starting. Starting. Just yes. just starting. Yes. So um I first started to contact like all of the media, the news, and they were all like they were all sympathetic with Sami. Of course, it's a it's a very humanitarian like story. It's a real story. But they all told me like Nura, it's it's old news. Okay, and he's he's in jail. It's a sad story, but Sami, what's new? What's what can we do about yes. it? Yes. And this is where I reached out through social media to all of my friends in all of different countries, all of my, you know, all of my colleagues, and I started telling them, like, you know, do you know the story about Sami? Like, let's, you know, let's talk about it. Let's start this conversation, and then, and then the campaign Smart, started. Man. The campaign started developing little by little, and then we started a free, free Sami campaign, and we did like a, a logo, everything, everything, and then we actually created pressure. We actually created pressure, and then the media were suddenly interested in the you know in the in story the because the social media are talking about and it. you started this whole movement and then one morning we got a call that they're freeing sami and yeah. that was the best day of my life Inshallah. and i actually wrote the press release if you look it up you'll see my name in the press release sami al Hajj is now free wow. and that's the story of sami so this was your first taste that, no this so this media. was your first media. taste that like a successful yeah. campaign yes. through media so um is this the start of the, the whole media what journey. we know about communication and everything that formed after that uh yes kind of the start of uh, communication was actually um a few years later so uh a few years later when i moved on in my career and i was um um i used to be a, a head of uh, the public relations uh, department and one of the leading organizations in Qatar and um, uh, that's after Al Jazeera yes yes it's okay. um, it's uh, um, a couple of years after Al Jazeera mm -hmm. and um, uh, there uh, so the business model and most of the organizations in Qatar and most of the successful organizations around the world the business model around PR is that you would um, you would outsource the campaigns mm -hmm. to to agencies oh. and where yes. I used to work um, um, we would work with the best, you know, the top uh, media agencies and social media agencies and marketing agencies in the world. And they're absolutely amazing. They're amazing. Mm. But they were all based in LA. They used to be based in NYC and they produced amazing work. But at that time, I wanted something a bit more local. Like I wanted, I wanted local campaigns. On hand. 
easier. Yeah, so I started searching for local PR companies. Um, I found I found a few. I found a few uh, local PR companies, but there weren't the standards that I was looking at. So I, I used to like I saw that the market was either like professional, high standard, amazing, but Western, mm -hmm. or local, but not of the standard I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. And this is where Just I realized the gap. the gap. Yes. The gap. Yes. yes. And this is where the um, like the seed of communication started, and. Um, um, this is where I started thinking about the company and starting the company and you know the gap in the market and the need in the market for something like that and um, so then I, um, I I tried to resign to start my own company I mean, within the Qatari culture this isn't something they encourage you you know if you know <laughs> you're, you're crazy are you why are you resigning are you yeah. Yeah. especially if you're working in this amazing organization yeah. and you have like a you, you know, have a good, salary. you have a good title and a good team and a good <laughs> a salary. salary. Um, it isn't something that people encourage. But um, so I, when I went to resign, I um, again I was very lucky that the uh, the the president of the organization called me. He called me in, into his office. He's like, Nora, why are you resigning? Is there a better offer that you're going to? I was like, no, there isn't a better offer. I have this, I'm very passionate. I want to start my, I see the gap in the market and I want to start my own business. And um, I, um, I know that he would support me in doing that. Um, and then he gave me, like now looking back, it was one of the most valuable advices that I got from him. He's like, okay, um, you're sure you want to do that? Okay, do that, but um, study. Don't just don't just start your business. Study, um, and in Doha, something that I really want to shed light on. In Doha, we have the best education in Qatar. Yes. Like a hundred million years ago, I went to Dharam, which is amazing, but it's yeah. it's very far. <laughs> it's very far away. But in Doha, we have the best education. So, um, and he was absolutely true because at that time. So I enrolled in uh, HEC Paris, I did my master's mm. and HEC Paris in Qatar um, is, one, is, the top, um, is the top executive education in the world. So I feel like something I just want to highlight that the people of Qatar, the people living in Qatar, we're, we're very lucky to have this kind of education, yes. like 20 minutes away. Yes. Um, and I want to encourage people to take, to take advantage of that. And he was absolutely right because at that time I wanted to start my agency. Yes, PR was my bread and butter, but I knew I knew nothing about financial statements. I knew mm. nothing about recruitment. Oh, I knew yeah. nothing about scaling up in the business. And this is what I learned in the university. This is what I learned in HEC. And I was doing my master's and at the same time I set up my company. Um, you opened a business by yourself. Yes. So you're there trying to get your master's and you're doing your business yes. and you don't have any business experience at that point. Yeah. So how are you managing all of, the, all of this? So looking back, it was crazy. I was studying and at the same time I was setting up the company um, from scratch because it's not, it's not just that the company, um, the idea of the company was totally new to the market. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're not just setting a business, you're setting a business model at that time didn't even exist. Just, You're yeah. kind of inventing a yes. business model. Um, but yes, it was crazy. But again, I think it was it was really great because everything I was learning, I was like next day implementing it wow. in, in my company. So and I, this really, really helped me. So you did quit your job. You ended up leaving your job. Yes. And you ended up just studying and focusing on this company. And yes. then you got it up and running and going. Yes. And then you started working again. Because yes. I know now you have a day job. Yes, yes. So for um, for uh, two years, I the, the time that I was um, studying, I was also setting up my company. 
um, and I'm I'm so proud to say this. Yeah, alhamdulillah, here now my my office. I have a alhamdulillah, I have a good office. It's in the Inshallah. West Bay. It's really nice. But my first first office was in the new industrial area. Okay. And I I used to drive every single day to the new <laughs> industrial area. I still love the new industrial area, by the way. I feel like it's full of opportunities. There's yeah, there's but, so many um, companies there. But I remember um, whenever my clients would want to visit, and um, I would send them the location. They're like. Is that Qatar or is that, is that like? <laughs> <laughs> so um, I am really proud it's that this is where I started. And I started in the new industrial area because my um, uh, communication was incubated in uh, Cubic, which is uh, Qatar's uh, business incubation center. Um, uh, it's, it's amazing that in Qatar, um, Qatar pays a lot of um, attention to entrepreneurs and uh, entrepreneurship Startups, yes. and um, they provide the environment for uh, companies to thrive. Mm -hmm. um, so this is where my, um, like I was, I was given an office in the incubation center and I started from there. You know, it, because you said that, it's actually so true. Like I love Qatar because they give people the opportunity mm -hmm. to start up and to follow their dream and to follow their passion. Like you said, schools available, yeah, offices available, loans available. It's just a wonderful country to be in. Just gotta say that. Just like that. Thanks, Abla. <laughs> this really is. It is right. It, it yeah. so is amazing. So uh, the question I have is. Like in these initial stages of your business and your office location and you're doing something that hasn't really been seen, mm. it's a fresh concept but you have the vision, mm. how do you convince people that you know what you're doing and how do you get these people on board? Because now mashallah, when we look into uh, communication, you have an amazing uh, portfolio. Oh, Mashallah, you very very strong in terms of what you do, but obviously it wasn't like that from the start. So, how how do, any strategies to convince people that look, I know what I'm doing, and this is what you need to be involved in. So I think that um, whenever you're, whenever a person is very passionate about what they're doing, um, they'll do it again and again and again until perfect it. And um, when you're when you're when you're really good, people can't ignore you. You know, you're. I always say that, like, be so good, people can't ignore you. Um, but then, um, like you said, in Qatar we have a really good culture where pe where businesses are are open to um, working with fresh companies and young companies. I'm not saying all businesses. I mean, obviously there was a lot of difficulties mm -hmm. entering into the corporates, but. Um, I still remember my my like the very first clients or the, you know the, the the people who really believed in me when I was just a startup and they still get special um, attention. <laughs> yes, yes. Because you know they they gave me this chance and I yes. really appreciate it. Till now. You're gonna say thank you to them. Or like? Um, you want to mention them? There, there's there's so many. I don't want to forget any. They know themselves. There's there's okay. a lot. But um, like for example, one of them is a um, is a Jabber Group. Um, it was one of the first uh, companies that worked with us. Okay. They believed in us. I uh, I met the the CEO of the Jabber Group, um, and he I I still remember at that meeting. He uh, I was explaining about what I'm doing, and looking back, I probably looked you know I looked very I don't know like young and ambitious, yeah. but. Um, uh, he looked at me and he said, you know, Noura, you remind me of myself when I wow. first started. And um, he had like a suit bag, like an old suit bag in his office. He's like, do you see this suit bag? I'm like, yes. He's like, I used to hold this suit bag and walk from one organization to another trying to oh. sell them things. And you, re you remind me of myself and this is why I'm going to give you this job. So wow. it's, it's, it's clients like that, that, um, that really make you appreciate the whole sustainable business model so now i'm not i'm not saying i'm a i'm a big or established business at all but whenever i meet a young ambitious say like photographer or content creator i always give them the, this chance because i remember myself mm -hmm. when i first started um and um 
again there's a lot of um there's a lot of governmental entities who i'm very grateful that they you know they're the government they can work with whoever they want to work with i really appreciate that they give us this opportunity and i i even appreciate more when they keep on coming back it yes. means that we did add value to them so yeah this uh, this project you're telling us about uh, yes, so very uh, very recently, alhamdulillah, we worked on um, a project called Al Wasmi. I don't know if you've uh, seen it, but it's um, um, it's the Gardens Festival in Katara that happened uh, yes. last spring, and um, this uh, alhamdulillah very successful project. Yes. I remember sitting in the press in the press conference, um, and it was like all of the partners are sitting in the press conference presenting the project, and the partners were uh, Orido. Uh, Supreme Committee, Katara, and Communication. Mashallah. And that made me like think, like, wait, um, like seeing all of those leading, leading mm. names in their industries. And then, and then my, my tiny company is next to them. It just made me um, like reflect. It was such, it's, it's moments like those that really make up for everything. all of, yeah, yes. everything, everything. All the hardship, all the nights up studying yes. and working and the stress yes. mm. and honestly it's not about the financials yeah. i always tell people like whenever i meet uh, clients for the first time i'm like why are you starting this yes. if it's for the money then like no stop like Sah. quit now Sah. it's not worth it Sah. to start something for the money but if you're if you're passionate, passionate. yes yeah. or if you yes. have a solution to a problem yes. or if you believe in what you're doing then yes yes if it's about money it's never going to work yeah always has to be if you're doing it from your heart mm -hmm. who, this is amazing who, who came up with a name uh, so um, how did it come about i'm interested in the story so i did um i wanted something that would say qatar mm. and that would you know communication because this is what we do and i i just came up with the name and i wanted a name that's not taken obviously so yeah that's actually a very nice <laughs> name very creative you're a very creative female. Thank you. I'm not going to say person, I'm going to say female. <laughs> okay, so I want to know, so after, okay, خلاص, so you graduated from H... HSC Paris. Okay. Inshallah, you're going to be the next intake. Inshallah, Rabb. And then uh, you're starting the company, your company's doing well. Yeah. When did you decide you're going to get a day job? And how, I'm sorry, and how were you able to manage time between your day job and the company and... My you're studies. St Again, you're studying. Yes. Okay, so. So, um, um, after, alhamdulillah, I launched, I launched the company and the company started growing and uh, the company started stabilizing and scaling up, um, I, I could start uh, a job again. And this is, so me starting working again is not about the, um, the financial needs, it's about um, giving back to the community, it's about uh, continuing on a, a career that you started. So my, my career is in PR and I wanted to continue on the PR. Um, your question about time, mm -hmm. I think there's always time. It's about priorities. Whenever I hear someone say, I don't have time, time. for something, this particular thing is probably not on their priority. Because like you said, yeah, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, I have, I have time for my day job, I have time for my agency. And I have time for my studies and family and some social life, not a lot, <laughs> but, and I have time for the gym. So it's, it's just about, um, I think it's about priorities. It's about being disciplined. Not every day you, you feel like waking up and going through all of those things, but, um, yeah. Do you know what's common about every guest we've had so far? The word discipline. Your time management skills must be very advanced. If, you, if you're going to do all of these different things, be involved in them, how do you handle pressure? So people, um, we act, I've noticed people react very differently to pressure. Yeah. Uh, I personally feel like pressure is what um, drives me to achieve more. Um, I know some people run away from, from pressure. I, um, I noticed um, recently, a few months back, I felt comfortable and it was a very long time since I've last felt comfortable mm -hmm. and this is where I felt like okay Nora if you're feeling comfortable this means you have to go to the next level um, now I'm not comfortable again 
and for me this means I'm on the right track you yeah, know that means there's some growth around the corner yeah I wonder why I'm always uncomfortable <laughs> I'm always uncomfortable. I'm like, okay, this something is missing. No, 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 no. Um, that's amazing that you just said. Now I know why. I mean, that's I'm on the right track. I'm, I'm uncomfortable. I feel Jean. like a lot of people are. <laughs> I'm uncomfortable, Jean. I can't help you. With that. I'm sorry. But I feel like a lot of people are trapped in their comfort zone, and it could Free. be it could feel like a very safe place, mm -hmm. but it's it's limiting you from reaching your potential. Even because they're afraid. Um, I mean, fear is real. I, I used to be super afraid when I first thought about resigning, yeah. um, when I first thought about starting my own business, when I first recruited the first person, the first five, eight people. It was so scary. Yes, yeah, okay. fear, fear is real, but um, you have to overcome it and you have to understand where it's coming from. As a woman, or I'm talking about other women as well, do you think a wife, a mom, can handle a day job, a business, taking care of herself, like going to the gym, cooking and taking care of the household and everything and managing her time? Or do you think it would be difficult for her to do so? So I can't, I can't speak on behalf of moms and wives, obviously, okay. but um, I can tell you that I know a lot of amazing examples. Yes you one of them Aww, um, so that's like there's 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 so many amazing women that can can it's all about balance that can balance and do everything yes it's true again it's about priorities it's about time management and being disciplined yes so you ladies you can do it you can all do it they they already did it i think yes. i think you should encourage men to do it because oh! all of the women i know <laughs> Right, guys, okay. you can do it. <laughs> you guys can get it done. <laughs> G. I think we should cut <laughs> this guy out. No, 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 no. No way, no way, no way. This is perfect. This is so true. I swear you're absolutely right. You know, I had to change my whole life cycle recently, like a few months ago. Uh, I used to work out three times a week at 7 p.m. And then I realized from working out from 7 to 8 was mm. taking most of my day, mm. like most of my night. Mm. My, I'm not spending the time with my daughter. Yeah. So I sat down with my friend and uh, I'm like, listen, we were training together. I was like, listen, this is not happening, blah, blah, blah. So we're like, okay, you know what? Let's try to work out in the morning. It's the best So thing. what we did, we did discipline ourselves. We started working out 7 in the morning mm. and, and that's how we managed our priorities. Mm. Yes. So I guess working out was the first priority. <laughs> no, but uh, I absolutely agree. I work out every morning and I feel like it's not working out, every obviously. Every morning? Uh, yes. Wow. So working out doesn't only, um, um, it's obviously it's a, you know, the, the physical activity, yes. but it's, it also gives you this, like, it's like having your morning coffee. You, it's like showing up in, office, in the office and you're ahead of everyone else. Sah. Sah. Sah, because you're like, you're mentally up awake. and awake. Yes. yes. I totally believe you. I, 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 my heart is with you, girl. <laughs> okay, go ahead. I, I don't mean to break up this bonding circle that's going on. <laughs> uh, Nora, how, how do you choose who you work with? Is there any criteria? Are you strict? I feel like you're someone who's strict with who you work with. Um, <laughs> that smile. I'm, I'm not, I'm not strict. Okay. No, but actually, I feel like every, I've enjoyed working with um, every client. Most of the clients uh, end up being long-term clients and there's this family uh, bond yeah. because um, every client we'd sign um, to answer your question, the first the first thing would be I'd, I'd meet with the client and I understand their brief. Yeah. You know, different clients have different PR uh, needs. Some would want like positioning, some would want sales, some would want market exposure. So I would understand from them what their needs and then I would always, whether, whether they were like um, a shop or a corporation or whatever, um, after meeting with the client, who is usually like the CEO or, or you know the owner, I would take their permission mm. to go, um, I, I call it like my invisible hat, I would wear my invisible hat and I would go and try their, their business, oh, whether nice. it be a restaurant or a, 
or a cafe or a grocery store or or a shop or whatever i like to go and see the real experience because i want to because sometimes what the what the owner sees or what the ceo sees isn't what It's really, really happening, happening yes. and isn't what the real problem is. Um, so I like to go and experience it myself, and then I would study the market and the competition and everything, and then I would come up, come back with you know with a proposal or a solution. Nice. That's a, that's a nice way of uh, putting it. Wow. Um, talking about competition. How do you, you feel about competition? You ask no, it's a really good question. No, the, the, quest, please ask the, the question, question. I've got is... Uh, <laughs> <She wants this. laughs> no, because it's, it's a real question. Yeah. Yeah. The question is about the competition. Like, uh, so you mentioned competition. Mm. Um, you mentioned also when you started, your concept was quite new. Yes. So I assume there wasn't much competition. Yeah. As the years went on, the competition probably increased. Yeah. Are you the kind of person who's like... let's stick to our core vision or you're the kind of person let's experiment and try and keep ahead of the co competition mm. like what's your thought on it uh, we'd love to we'd love to know more sure so um before ask before answering your specific question um just about competition i feel like competition is healthy whenever the more uh, there is in the market the more you're forced to either um upgrade your services or you know leave the market or um you know or or even collaborate with with like the competition and creating a bigger picture so i'm always pro competition nice. uh, um, but actually i always like to encourage um similar agencies to start and i and i have and i'm really proud of them for starting um but um so to answer your question i feel like not not just uh, pr agencies but any successful agency or business is a business that um, develops and um, changes depending on the market. Mm -hmm. Because when I first started, obviously the market needs was very different than what the market is right now. And if you look at all of the like the top successful companies, they, they are the ones who always adopt. Education versus learning on the job. Okay. Because cool. you're now Studying for your PhD, yes. mashallah. Is there a correlation between education and your success in business? Because some people would argue that it's uh, it's not correlated. So, tell us your thoughts about this. So there's a lot of um, there's different school of thoughts. Yeah. There there are definitely school of thoughts that are pro um, like um, uh, street uh, wit versus uh, school. I feel like I'm in the middle. I feel like they comp they complement each other. Uh, obviously, you need your experience, uh, but you also need your education. Okay. There are certain and there are also certain um, um, segments that are pure education. Like you can't you can't become a doctor mm -hmm. by you know practicing Just or um, <laughs> by yourself. <laughs> yes, and um, I'm so I'm currently so what I'm doing is a JD, which is a Juris Doctorate. It's um it's a law degree, um, so I obviously. I that up by the way. <laughs> Zain, that's good. So um, obviously you cannot learn law by practicing. Um, you have to you have to read it and study it. So wait, you went from political science to business administration to law. I feel like this is the golden triangle. You know, the the best of everything. Um, yeah. I, I mean, did you decide to study law because of your business or is it because of your career? It's, uh, it's both. Okay. So, um, in, in my career, I, I obviously like, for example, in the Sami Hajj uh, case, I was exp exposed to a lot of um, legal matters, but also in, in my career and in my business, it's where I realized the importance of, you know, having a very strong law, law system and being backed up by by a strong um, uh, legal uh, framework. Okay, this is completely off subject. So when we spoke over the phone yesterday, you said something to me that was very interesting. And it was about an advice your mentor gave you. Yes, so when I... Um, uh, When I first started um, my company, 
um, I um, I was recruiting and obviously and also like in in my career um, um, as you go up the ladder it's um, it's usually more male dominant than female and uh, sometimes you find yourself one of or the only female in the in the room um, it sometimes gets intimidating you want to fit in and you feel like for me to fit in i have to act a certain way that everyone around me is acting mm -hmm. and you do see that in some of the the female uh, um yeah like the female leads in different corporations they they start to um uh, adapt to the situation around yes. us yes men are great leaders and they have their there's their strength and weaknesses yeah, yeah. but also women are amazing leaders if they if they lead as women and they have their own strength that you can play on mm -hmm. um, and there's so many successful um, examples of of women who who lead as women you know yes. I just want to we talked about some amazing things you share some amazing stories um, you really got Abla excited as well which is good <laughs> and I'm sure the audience um, Goals moving forward now. Uh, 2020 has been a crazy year. Mm. Um, just touch a little bit upon what you what you've got in mind for the for the coming years regarding regarding business and develop development. So I, the the next few years are very I feel are very exciting for um, for everyone in Qatar because of everything that's happening. You know we have a we have a lot going on and there's. There is amazing opportunities happening. Um, the the PR market and the marketing and the influencer market is developing, is mm -hmm. continuously developing, and it's very interested interesting to be in it. Um, it um, personally, like within communication, alhamdulillah, we're we're scaling up, and um, we have uh, we have a lot planned. We're very um, we're very lucky to have loyal clients who, who keep on working with us and and as they grow we're growing with them so tell us Nura, how can a person become an influencer uh okay so that's individual. that's a question that i get asked a lot okay um partly because in communication what we do is that we would identify and um um help an influencer grow and um give them more uh, commercial opportunities um, so first of all a lot of people think that becoming an influencer is uh, an, an easy thing to do they hold they hold their phone and they get free food <laughs> and money and that's not true um, I can tell you uh, we work with a lot of influencers um, whether they're the influencers and in communications family or the friends of communication and they're they're all very committed, disciplined, hardworking people. There's a lot of work that that goes on behind the phone yes. um, that people don't know about. Um, there's a lot of planning. There's a lot of negotiating. There's a lot of discipline that happens. Um, to answer your question, what makes an influencer? Um, I've noticed um, a common criteria for the successful influencers um, first you have to have charisma if you don't have charisma then whatever you do you're not Perfect. can you learn charisma no i think it, it just comes yeah? yeah you have it or you don't yes yes i think i um, okay. so uh, first is charisma two is clear key messages um, three is the most important thing which is discipline you have to be disciplined um, passion yes. if you're not passionate about being an influencer you'll never become an influencer because yes. it is a lot a lot a lot of hard work yes, so if you're not passionate about it you'll you'll just quit um, five. five is communication <laughs> <laughs> if you have if you have no 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 if you have a strong communication with a Q or with <laughs> or a C <laughs> I'm, I'm joking um, communication could be one of it one of the the things but I, I was gonna say um, having a strong support system but yes it's difficult but um, like like we said in the beginning mm. if you're so good at something people cannot ignore you yeah. yes. so be so good that people can't ignore you yes. 
Uh, Nora, in terms of the people that you decide to work with, the influencers you decide to work with, how do you come to that decision? Okay, so um, um, so we have two kinds of um, uh, influencers. We have the exclusive communication influencers <clears throat> who are part of our family. And then we have friends of the agency who we, we work with, but they're not necessarily signed within um, the family. And um, I do get asked this question a lot, like how do you decide who do you sign within your family and who don't? Um, um, so, like I said, they're, they're the five top things that makes you a good influencer. Um, it's, it's something that uh, with, with time, um, and through experience in my career, I've noticed that there are certain traits. Mm. Um, obviously, the market needs is important. Um, the, the values, the person's value, because whenever you're signing someone to your family, they, they're part of your family and they reflect, so they mm. should reflect your values. Um, I, I really focus on commitment and professionalism. Um, there, are, there are some amazing influencers who started out great, but um, I mean, all around the world, they started out great, but it's because their lack of professionalism that they, they lost a lot of their audience. Consistency. Mm -hmm. I think that answers the question. Yes. Well, Noura, it was a pleasure having you uh, with us uh, on 974 Live today. Seriously, you are a success story and you're still going to be more successful, inshallah, in the future. You are someone that so many of us will look up to. You followed what you you followed your passion. You continued on your education. You didn't quit and you kept on going. And uh, seriously, my props to you, Yani. Yeah, Mashallah, like you're just wonderful. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for coming on the show. Um, I really enjoyed it, and thank you for your kind words. It really means a lot. Thank you.